Coming up on Hands on Mac, using your iPad as a second monitor. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remote, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash twit for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. Use the code TWIT30 at checkout. Hello, everybody. Time once again for Hands on Mac, a look at some of the cool things you can do with a Macintosh. This particular episode of Hands on Mac requires an iPad because it turns out your iPad can be used as a second monitor for your Macintosh, whether it's an iMac, a Mac Pro, or as I use it with my MacBook Air. Now, this is not a new idea. In fact, there was a company, former Apple employees, created called Duet Display that did this sort of okay, a little imperfectly, by connecting a cable between your Mac and, uh, and your uh, iPad and sharing the screen. In fact, Duet Display is still around, and they still have a secret sauce because they also work with Windows. So if you do want to use your iPad as a second screen to a Windows PC, you might want to look at DuetDisplay.com. There was also a hardware dongle, which you might remember, called Luna Display. They're still in business, too. You put the dongle uh, into the USB port on your Mac, and then it allowed you to use the iPad to control the Mac, more than just a second display, it really made the iPad kind of like a remote Mac. Uh, and that's still uh, around and still, I guess, going strong. But both these companies kind of got Sherlocked. You know the term Sherlock? <clears throat> Apple came along with a similar technology built in to Mac OS and iOS that kind of made Duet and and Luna a little um, less likely to do well. They call it, Apple calls it, a sidecar, and it started with Mac OS Catalina and iOS 13. And honestly, it's fantastic, especially if, like me, you use a portable Macintosh. Now, I'm going to show you some video from home because that's the easiest place for me to show this, of me with my MacBook Air and my iPad Pro. Kind of interestingly, the screen on the iPad Pro, the 12.9-inch, is pretty much the same size as the MacBook Air. So it's like having a dual-screen MacBook Air. It works both wirelessly and wired. Uh, if you connect the two, people sometimes say it works a little bit better. Honestly, my experience is it works just fine over Wi-Fi. You all have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. And as you can see, uh, I can also use this at home with my iMac Pro, I have a three-screen setup on the iMac Pro, the iMac and two cinema displays. But if I wanted to add a fourth smaller screen next to it, I can also do that using Sidecar. It's very simple. On the Macintosh, you go to the little menu bar icon for AirPlay, drop it down. You'll see all your AirPlay devices. As you can see, I have Apple TVs. But you'll also see your iPad, as long as it's on the same network or connected via a cable. And you can select it. Now you have an extended screen. I'll need to place this screen using the display's control panel and the arrangement tab to figure out where my iPad is in this complicated screen array. And you get to it by moving the mouse there. So I'm going to drag my mouse over and there it is on the iPad Pro. Now, the frustrating thing, especially on modern iPad Pros like this one that has the Apple keyboard, the new Magic Keyboard with trackpad. You can't use the keyboard or the trackpad when you're using your iPad this way. You have to use it as a separate standalone display and use your Macintosh keyboard and mouse or Macintosh keyboard and trackpad as the input device. So really think of it as just a standalone extra screen. It's really great for traveling though. With the MacBook Air and uh, a sidecar iPad, I now have a lot more space. Lisa likes to have a lot, a lot of space for her spreadsheets, for instance. It really works quite well. And I have to say, I have used Duet, and I do own Luna Display. I don't ever use them anymore because sidecar works so well, so smoothly, so effortlessly. Uh, if you're using Catalina and a late model Mac and iPad, 
Sycar is really worth a try. And uh, I think you'll see, uh, for me, it makes my iPad even more useful. Our show today brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you're interested in an IT career, but you're not sure which one's right for you, IT Pro TV can help. Sign up for a premium membership right now and let an expert guide you. With over 4,000 hours of IT training, get the certs you need to be successful. Go to itpro.tv slash twit and use the code twit30 for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active consumer subscription. That's itpro.tv slash twit and use the code twit30. IT Pro TV. Build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. And that's it for this edition of Hands on Mac. I'll be back next week with another great Macintosh tip. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining me. And I guess as the YouTube kids say, subscribe, ring the bell, and, <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, folks, I'm Micah Sargent, host of Hands on iOS right here on the Twit Network. If you've got iOS devices or watchOS devices or tvOS device, any kind of Apple mobile device, you are going to want to check out Hands on iOS. It is the best way to make the most of those devices. I walk through tips, tricks, and everything in between, plus answer your questions. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash HOI.